Okay, welcome to step two. Now, parts you're going to need for this. One rigid bottom motor, uh, RBM 42HT38, 1684A, one of them. One 1004, three 1003s, four 1002s, 32. 1032M4 screws, four 1033M3 screws, a 1036 pulley, uh, no idea in the number, but it's the 608 bearing, so 8mm half. 1 1049 bolt. 1 1069 nut for that bolt. Okay, four rigid knuckle corners. Then you need in the front 1016, left side 1017. Right side 1017 and the back 1016. Now these are symmetrical, so it doesn't matter if you have them that way around or that way around. Same with these, you know, that way, that way. Uh, you also need four 1014s. Now, the orientations of these parts are as follows the 1014s need to have this notch in them that needs to face up. So these are the four vertical pieces and you can see, let's see if we can get it, that notch just there, that needs to be upwards, so, okay, so what you want to do is take your 1014s and take these with the uh, flat face here, and you want these two holes here, see there's a hole there, yep, that hole and the other hole, which is over there, and this notch has to be at the top, so away from this, this goes at the bottom in the flat face of the hole, and these two holes, these two here actually go in, so to the inside, because there's holes inside these holes here. That's where you put the screws in, so just do that for all four. Now, one thing to do when you're pushing these in is, and uh, for all the pushing the plastic parts in, is just push it in and look at the hole where it's meant to line up to screw in, and you just push it in, and if the holes line up, which I don't know if I can... Yeah, so if the holes line up, then you know you've got it in the right spot. But sometimes if they're, you know, a little bit out, you know you need to push it in more. You might even need to use the hammer to get it in fully. Next, we need to attach the motor to its mount. So, just take one of these. Okay. Next, take your four 1033 screws, put them through. Now, you want the cables going to where the screw holes are here. So, these cables over here. Now, it takes a lot of finesse to get these lining up perfectly with the holes. Um, really, take your time doing it, okay? You don't want to de-thread these holes. You can't really re-tap them in these thread stepper motors. You can't pull the motors apart. Just take your time, make sure you line them up properly. Now, you just want to tighten these down until they just see they slightly bite into the plastic there. Um, don't go too overboard. Once they're bitten in, it's going to hold that solidly there. Okay, next. I'm just going to take a pulley here and attach that. Okay, so make sure you back out those grub screws or it's not going to slip over easily. Now, I'm actually later on going to back these out fully, put some blue Loctite on them uh, just to make sure it holds them permanently in place. Um, it's definitely a good idea to do that. Now, this is a bit of a tight fit. It does just kind of slip over. You just do it till it's flush with the top there. Just tighten this one against the flat first, and just turn it, and uh, do the other one. That should spin freely, just make sure it's not rubbing against the bottom there, but mine spins fine. It's got enough space there for a belt, should be good. Then you want to take this uh, 1004, and this bolt here, and your bearing. Slip your bearing in the gap there, slip this bolt through, and it should just slip through like so. Perfect. Get this bolt on the other side, which was a 100 something that I can't remember right now. So, if your bolt doesn't just easily slide over here, what you want to do is take the drill and probably put it in a drill, but if you don't have a drill, it should be alright. Just start with some sandpaper and just kind of take off the corner here. 
So just that edge, focus at first, just on the edge here, because um, it might just be catching on there. Then if it's still, if you go to put it on and it's still kind of, might just get that tiny bit over the edge of sand, but still won't push on easily, then uh, just give it another go at just kind of slightly sanding this surface. Don't go overboard. I've got 800 grit here. I would probably even go to using 1200 grit. Um, it's really fine tolerance and you don't want this wobbling about heaps. So just to note that. Now if your bolts, they might are a bit rusty. Uh, they just came in like a really rusty packet. I'm just going to take some steel wool here. I'm just going to work it into them. And uh, just because I don't really want these binding up on those bearings. Um, it's kind of helpful if they don't. Now to protect it, I'm just going to take a bit of my 3-in-1 oil here. Just go over it. Just to uh, give it a bit of a longer life. So that's a 4mm Allen key. Fortunately, you don't get one of them, um, which could make your life hard. Luckily, I have one. Uh, you might need to borrow one or source one or something. Now, you just don't want to tighten. You don't want to tighten these up, and you want to make sure it's slid as far forward as it'll go. So, like so. That'll be good for now. So, here's when I'm going to start building. Now, I've got my four corners ready, and. I'm Actually, just going to take my screws and I have to go on the inside of these. So, take my arm key, get it in there. It's going to be a bit of a challenge. Just tighten that down, do that for all of them. So, I just finished removing all the sticky stuff. I hate it, don't want it on my bot, so I removed it all. Uh, this is some prep that you need to do. So you want to take your sidebars, the whatever they were, can't remember now, um, and just these bits here, pop them in, and screw them in. So once you've got that, you want to take your back bar and uh, see how these holes, they're actually offset to the front here. So they're offset to the front. Let me put my motor over there. Get it lined up with the holes, just there, and screw that in. Okay, then you just want to take this front part here. Again, those face out, these are kind of offset towards that side now. Towards the back, you want the Allen head facing upwards, and then you just put this one on here. Next, these parts. The left and right side. Now, if you've got the Z-Rod upgrade, uh, you want to put them that way, flat on top. And if you've got the standard Z-Rod with coupler, you want to put them that way. So the coupler kind of sits in this area here. And, uh, you know, so you still get your full Z height. But yep, I've got Z-Rod upgrade. So they're going this way. Again, screw in there. Um, these are actually offset to that side. So that's the way they have to go as far as putting these on. See, so on this side, offset to there, so these are going to go like that. And then screw them in with your 1032s. Okay, so, now we've got all our parts, we just want to press them in. Now to finish this off, the best way to do it is to put two of these rigid knuckles on one piece, like so, and take this, like that, and just slip them over the ends. That's the end of part two, stay tuned for part three. Check out my other videos, don't forget to subscribe.